Happy Christmas Sunday. And uh, thank you for joining us online. And uh, for those of you that uh, are here for the first time, we are at Pulaski Western Church, located just north of Syracuse, or about 30 miles north of Syracuse, in between Syracuse and Watertown, New York. Yes, we are in the lake effect area, so we expect to have a white Christmas. And we will have a Christmas Eve service coming up uh, just a few days, just this week, later this week. And you're invited to join us here as well, online for that. Now, being that it's online, I'm not sure we'll be able to show you the snow outside or not, but we'll see what we can do about that. All right, God bless you. Have a great day. Morning once again, this is uh, the Christmas Sunday here at Pulaski Wesleyan Church. And no doubt all around the world, this is uh, the Sunday just before Christmas. And we are uh, celebrating Advent. All of our candles are lit now, all four candles. And today we're talking about peace. It reminds me of uh, something I read recently about the Christmas story. You know, in the Christmas story, you got all these different characters. You got the wise men, you got the shepherds and angels and and uh Though there's no mention of in the Bible, the innkeeper, if you're watching the Charlie Brown Christmas, whatever. Uh, anyway, with that in mind, there's, there's someone said that, you know, all this story about Jesus being born in a manger and all that stuff, which I'll talk about Christmas Eve a little bit more. Uh, someone said that if they were wise women and not wise men, uh, that they would have they would have asked directions and arrived on time, uh, birthed the baby. Uh, cleansed the stable, baked a casserole, brought practical gifts, and there would be peace on earth. Well, that's kind of an idealistic look at it, I suppose, but it's kind of a funny way to look at it. Uh, all the things are kind of strange. Listen, all these different strange gifts we'll talk about over the next couple of weeks, whatever. If you look them up, they all have meaning. All these stories, why shepherd, uh, why, who were these magi, they all have meaning that be, goes beyond what seems to not make sense. Uh, but here's the thing, we're talking about peace, and it's much more complicated than just a story about whether or not uh, they had brought different gifts or not to this uh, special event. See, peace is uh, something that God wants you to have. In scripture, it says in Romans 5, verse 13, it says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the goal and purpose of our message today is that you will have peace with God, especially at this Christmas time. You see, what is peace? Peace has been described as freedom from disturbance or tranquility, or it might be a state of or a period in which there is no war or war has ended, uh, similar to the concept of keeping law in order. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about God's peace. It is that, that harmony and calmness of body, mind, and spirit when we're trusting in the power and the grace of God. You see, it affects all of your being. That's the peace that we want you to have today. So let me ask you yourself a question right now. Close your eyes and think of a peaceful place. What do you see? Uh, perhaps it's that sunrise this week you saw when you got up earlier, the sunset late in the day. Perhaps it's a picture of a, a vacation you had in the Rocky Mountains or maybe in the Northeast up in uh, Maine or someplace like the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Lots of the pictures you have in your phone of someplace serene and peaceful. That is something that God give you to think about right now as we think about where peace originated in the whole story in the Garden of Eden. So when I think about peace, I think about the Garden of Eden and how God created this place. It says, it says in, in Genesis chapter one, it says, then the Lord God formed a man and, and from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. And so it says the Lord God planted a garden and that garden was an awesome place to be. It was better than any garden I can imagine. And I can, I've been to some beautiful gardens. Some of you are really good gardeners. I'm not a good gardener, but I'm working on it. And, and this place was full of all kinds of animals and, and creatures and things to eat and fruit and all that. And in this situation here, in the original way God created the world, there was peace between God and man. There was peace between man and nature. And there was peace between man and woman. There was peace in the home. You see, that's how God created it. Man and God says it, that God said, let us make man after our own image. He's talking about the Trinity, he gave him a spirit. And in the image of God, he created him so they could be in a special relationship. It says in the cool of the evening, God would walk 
with man. And so there's a special relationship with, with God and man, which had no separation whatsoever. There was communion with God on a regular basis. And then also there was the nature. It says, now God, Lord God, planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man and, and he, that he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground and trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. And in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's in Genesis chapter two, eight and nine. Now also it says that God said, look, it's not good that man should be alone. Let's make a special person out of his same uh, his same type of being. He out of his ribs he created woman. This says that, uh, but for Adam no suitable helper was found. Uh, referring to all the animals, his good relationships he had with all the animals, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took out of the man. Uh, uh, man's ribs and then close it up at, at the place where the flesh was and the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man and the man said this he said whoa man right he said this is how this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man Genesis 2 22 24 so during this time God created the world originally it was, there was peace between God and man, and there was also peace between man and woman. In the family, there was peace. And there was peace between nature and man. But here's what happens. Paradise was lost when man ate of the one tree he was not supposed to eat of. No, it wasn't the woman's fault. He was standing right there with her when they were tempted. And that's when paradise and peace between God and man, and man and woman, and man and nature ended that day because when he ate that he died his eyes were open shame entered into his relationship with his wife and peace left the home man had hid from god and man separated was separated spiritually and physically from god and the presence and and, and the presence of the of god was everywhere at the world was lost then and world peace was lost that day and woman began to hate snakes too by the way well kind of anyways and nature animals and nature began to be at odds with mankind and the farm didn't grow as good as it did and they were kicked out of the garden that's when peace left the world when sin came so today we have a weary world thousands and thousands of years of people trying to find peace apart from God and they don't find peace apart from God you see people pursue peace uh, the type of peace which is lack of conflict, the lack of war. And, and actually, during the time when Jesus came to earth and was born, there was a peace going on. They call it the Pax Romana, 200 years of peace. But this type of peace is the type of peace that you have when you subdue your enemies, when you, when you press down and, and keep all the rebellions from coming up. And many times people rebel. In fact, there was times, a lot of times there was battles going on in Rome over control of the government. But there was peace because there was no real rival to Rome, no real army out there that they could not suppress. And that's the type of peace a lot of people pursue today. As long as my side is stronger than your side, we'll have peace peace. There's also those out there that, that try to pursue uh, justice like as an emotional substitute for peace because when someone wronged them, maybe their army attacked me, we attack them and we get revenge. And so we try to correct the wrong or someone's got to pay for that crime type attitude. And that's the pursuit many people are on today. They're pursuing justice to such a degree. And I fear that many times they lose sense of peace as the purpose of justice. You see, Scripture talks about justice a lot, and God is a God who is just. It says in Scripture, it says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Uh, carefully consider what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible on your part, live at peace with everyone. Do not avenge yourselves, beloved, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. That's found in Romans chapter 12. And way back in the Old Testament, Micah, the prophet, has a great verse. And I know a judge who puts this on his desk. I'm not sure if it's going to be seen or not. To help remind him of what he's doing there as a judge. And he says, he has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. You see, because peace apart from God never really accomplishes. Justice apart from God 
never really accomplishes its purpose. See, the third thing is there are people who are pursuing real peace with God through forgiveness of sins and reconciliation in the relationship with him. You know, it says in, in uh, Philippians chapter four, it says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, you can find peace if you really sincerely pray to God. He can lead you on a path to peace. And this, it, 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 it will ultimately lead you to a place where you need to deal with sin in your life and be reconciled to God because forgiveness of sin brings peace to us and reconciliation for us. And then if we truly have that peace, we will have that same attitude towards others. And all this is from God who through Christ Jesus reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18. That is, in Christ... God was reconciled in the world. In this baby born in Bethlehem, God was working to reconcile the world, to bring peace to the conflict between God and mankind. And in Christ, God was reconciled the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Now it's our message to the world as a church, as Christians. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ and making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That's where your peace on earth will come. The peace of God, what we're talking about, that people are on a path to pursue, is one that touches your whole being. It's not just subduing an enemy and holding them down. It's not just making you the top of the heap. No, this is something that changes everything about you. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, may, the God, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you, that sets you apart, and through and through, inside and out, and may your whole spirit and your soul and your body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the reconciliation of this lost race that was that was full of shame for its sin, for rebellion against God. That is the peace of God working to bring us back to a place. That's why Christ came. That's why he humbled himself and was born like a baby so he can reconcile you to God and sanctify your whole being. God wants you to have a peace that affects your soul and your mind and your spirit, everything about you. And it only comes through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So what happens when a person finds this peace? Well, first of all, you'll never find this peace unless you find Christ Jesus. And in Luke chapter two, we have a story of a man who spent his whole life on this path to peace, pursuing God, uh, staying in the temple, seeking to, to find peace and reconciliation for all of people who had lost in sin in Israel, who had lost their, lost their freedom as a result of sin and rebellion against God and all the struggles and trials. And God had revealed to him something. Listen to this, it says in Luke chapter two, verse 22. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him, that's Jesus, up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, of two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ and it came in the spirit into the temple. And when he, his, the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. When you find the Christ, you find peace. Holding this child in his arms and realizing this is the Messiah. This is the one come to sacrifice for the sins of the world. This is the one come to bridge the gap between God and man. He says, for my eyes have seen 
your salvation, O God, which you have prepared in the sight of all people as a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. There's so much in that statement. Not only he come to save Israel, he came to save all of us around the world, regardless of our ethnicity. It's open for everyone to find Christ. Peace in the heart, in your being, in your soul. It is for you through the Christ. That is the story of Christmas. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. You know, Jesus, he said to his disciples, he said in John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not the peace like the Romans, not the peace of just kind of like, well, getting back at people, making things even. No, real peace where you are serene and you're calm and you're trusting God. We need that peace, don't we? Our weary world is desirous of a peace that helps us in all the, the, the turmoil and the, the, the uncertainties of the future. Christ has come. And he offers that peace. He says to us also in John 14, 1, he says, let not your heart be troubled. What are you troubled about? He's saying to you, oh, believer, believe in Jesus. Do not let your heart be troubled. I've got all things under control. And talks about their future, how I, I'm building a place for you in heaven. And don't worry about things. Know his peace. Do you know this kind of peace? Do you want to receive this kind of peace? You know, there's something called the steps to peace with God. You might look it up and find it. It's been used by many people. And, and basically, it talks about five things. One, there's God's purpose. God's purpose is for you to have a life of peace and life. He, he came that might have life and have it more abundantly, it says in John 10, 10. And then there's the problem. The problem is the sin we talked about that happened in the Garden of Eden. It, it is sin. Understand that sin is the obstacle to peace with God. Sin is the obstacle to peace with your husband or wife. Sin is the obstacle to peace in our society because sin is basically selfishness. Sin is the obstacle to peace with nature. And all the problems in our world, it's sin that's entered. But here's the remedy. The remedy is the cross of this child of Jesus Christ because on the cross he died for your sins and my sins and for the sins of the world for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and God in Christ comes to reconcile us on the cross he demonstrated to us his love in Romans 5 it says for God demonstrates his love for towards us and while we're yet sinners Christ died for us and then there's our response. Our response is we must receive Jesus, this child, into our heart to receive peace. The way that Simeon took him in his arms and said, my eyes have seen salvation. Have you received Christ into your life? The Bible says as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe on his name, John 1, 12. And Romans 10, 9 says, you must confess Jesus as your Lord. So receive and confess him as Lord. And then there's God's assurance, which in his word says this, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. God's word says we can have peace. Listen, the word of God is here for us. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, through the work of the cross, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1. Let us pray. God, our Father, thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. The peace that affects my emotions and my, my beings, my, my health, my mental health, my physical health. The peace that affects all of my relationships. Thank you for the peace of God in Christ Jesus that comes from forgiveness of sins and being born of the Spirit into your family. In you, we have purpose and we have belonging. I pray that everyone who hears this message would receive that purpose and belonging and they would pursue you and follow you and know whenever this conflict comes, we're not, we're not at peace. We need to go back to that relationship with our God and Savior and make sure we're at peace with you because that's what will bring peace on earth. Oh God, as the song says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. May God bless you today.